Welcome to Building Stuff, my name is Zach, and today I'm going to show you how to make an inexpensive tool that can turn this sheet of steel into a cone or tube just like this. Let's get to it. So I do have a 30 inch slip roll that I use for most of my rolling, but Lately, I've been working on some bigger pulse jet engines and have wanted to use stainless for longevity. And the 16 inch stainless sheets are just way too much for this machine. Now, I can do it, but it's a real bear and I really have to struggle. Anything mild steel, six or 18 gauge or smaller isn't too bad, especially if the pieces aren't too long. Even this stainless piece to roll this into a cone like this isn't too much extra work. But when you're trying to move this 20 inch long piece and turn it into a cone similar to this, I'm really overworking the machine and bending it manually anyways while it's just clamped into the rollers. So let's see if we can figure out a better way to do this. First, let me show you what I have been doing. Now I've been putting it in the roller and tightening everything down, tightening the top clamp, adjusting the bottom to make it as tight as possible. And the best I can do is maybe get the edges to roll up a little bit. Usually what it does is it, it goes flat, it goes through the rollers, makes a dip, and comes right back out flat on the other side. It's just not doing it. So what I've been doing is, is trying to bend it as much as possible with the rollers, not getting very far, but then putting a piece of angle iron and then a couple of clamps on the end. and using the clamps as some leverage to pull up and bend the tube on the rollers. And that's, it's, it's overloading the machine, it's, it's bending the rollers. It's really, I need to find a better solution for this. So this is what I have in mind. My slip roll has three rollers, two right on top of each other and then one in the back. The one in the back is what indicates the radius of the tube that you're, that you're trying to bend. I really don't think that's necessary. What I wanna do is have a roller one on the bottom one on top so that it gives a smooth surface so we can put the material in and then you just kind of reef on it and bend it little increments at a time kind of like doing it in a press break so to simulate the rollers i found this piece of two inch quarter inch wall tubing at the local steel yard they already had this cut it was already cut into a four foot section it's a little bit longer than what i need but that's fine i think it cost me about forty dollars most of the other materials I already had lying around I've got a piece of 3 8 thick, I think it's two and a quarter inch angle iron, and a few other various things. But this is what we're going to do to make the two rollers, a couple of uprights, and uh, some mounts to actually bolt it down to the table. So to decide how long I want these rollers to be, I'm going to go off of the material that I'm trying to bend. I don't think, th these, are, these are about, let's see, 19 and a quarter inches. I really don't think that I really want to be trying to bend anything much bigger than this. It's already been a bear as, as it is. So if I assume I can keep it under 20 inches, maybe I'll do 21 inches uh, total length for both the rollers. That way, if I keep it around 20 inches or under, I should have plenty of wiggle room. got the two rollers cut out now we got to figure out the spacing and the length of the uprights on this angle iron so obviously this top roller is going to go at the very top of the angle and we got to figure out the spacing between the two rollers so the material I'm bending is only about 60 thou I don't think I'll be bending too much thicker than that and I was intending on using some of this thin foam pad uh, more as a friction uh, so that the sheets don't slip on me putting that inside on both maybe both sides I'm not sure yet this stuff's maybe 60 80 thou something like that it's not very thick so I'm thinking about a quarter of an inch gap in between the rollers should do pretty good 
So we'll add two inches for the roller, a quarter inch, another two inches, and we'll do another two inches for good measure. Just to get it off the table a little bit. So we're at six and a quarter inches. Alright, we got the two uprights. Now we just need something to weld to the uprights to clamp it down to the table. So I'm just going to take the remainder of this piece, it's a little over 20 inches, and I'm just going to cut that in half. Alright, we got these feet cut. We're going to get all these pieces cleaned up, and when we do that, we'll put a little radius on the bottom of this upright so it sits nice and flush on these feet. All right, let's clean the ends of these rollers up and I'm gonna put a good chamfer on here so we have good penetration when we weld. All right, we got all our pieces cut out, so now we just need to put things together, line them all up, and start welding them together. Alright, minor problem, doesn't quite fit, we got to cut a little radius into the foot so it wraps around the ro each roller, that way you can get it nice and tight and weld it up. Alright, so now that the bender is done, I need something to clamp to the piece of sheet so that I can grab onto it and bend it and not cut my fingers and have a little bit of leverage. I was just using some, uh, some large clamps and just using those uh, as leverage, but I think I need to come up with something a little bit nicer. So I've got a piece of angle that actually ended up being the right size. It's, uh, I think it's uh, 5 16 by 2 inch. And what I'm going to do is take some C clamps and weld them to this piece of angle and I've got a piece of one inch square tubing I think it's eighth inch wall and we'll slide it into the clamps and then that'll give us a place in between where we can clamp our material then we'll take this piece of three quarter inch black pipe we'll cut two pieces out of it maybe about 12 inches each and then weld that to the angle so we get some leverage
these C clamps don't fit in this tube all the way, so we're going to give it a little extra nudge to get them in there, and that that should hold them in just fine. Now we just got to weld our handles on the angle iron and then slide the angle iron under our clamps and then tack these heads down to the angle iron. Moment of truth, let's clamp our piece of sheet metal in. Let's see if we can turn this into a cone. Just take little bites at a time. So far that's working pretty good. It didn't take too long to get it into a tubular-ish shape. Now I wasn't being very careful when I did this. I was just kind of making it into a circle as fast as I could. But for the most part it turned out pretty good. What I need to do is I need to address these flat spots on the end and a little bit one over here. So I think if we took that, that clamp and we put it in the center or off to the side maybe, not on the ends, we can get this to round over a little bit more into a conical shape. Well, it's not perfect, but for as much time as I put into it, I think it's pretty good. Now, even when I roll uh, mild steel on the roller, the the ends are always a little bit a little bit flat. They never get curled over like they should. So that's always something I have to address, and it always needs a little bit of tweaking afterwards, anyway. So I, where it is right now, I'm I'm very happy. This 304 stainless is not easy to deal with. It's 18 gauge. It's pretty thick. It doesn't really want to move. From here on out, I can take it and I'll use a piece of 2x4 as an anvil and we'll clean up this edge, just kind of roll these edges over a little bit so that way we can use either some clamps or a ratchet strap or two to close up the gap and then start welding it together. I'll show you how I do that. So this is how I do all the fine work on my tubes to get them a little more round and fitting better together so we can get them welded. It's just a 2x4 uh, bolted to the table, nothing fancy. Uh, put it over there, take a hammer, I, I just use one of my forging hammers, and then just work the edges over a little bit at a time until it kind of fits together, and then you can get it welded up. So in just a few minutes, with the hammer and uh, the wooden anvil, I got it pretty round and curled the edges over a little bit so they weren't completely flat. There's a bit of a gap, that's not a big deal. We're gonna close those up. I usually use some ratchet straps, but I'm gonna try to use some clamps and see if that'll do the same thing. I think it will.
So those clamps worked well enough. It didn't take much persuasion to get this seam all closed up, ready for tacking. I used a couple of ice grips on the ends to get just the ends to line up just perfect. And now I'll take the TIG welder and we'll lay a few tacks along the seam, kind of adjusting it as we go and getting it ready so we can weld the whole thing up. Now that seam's not lining up just how I want it, so I've got some tacks to keep it in place. And then I'm going to use the old wooden anvil here and a hammer and just kind of smooth this out. And then we can lay a few more tacks and then finish welding it up. Well, in conclusion, I think this was a complete success. I was able to roll this 16 gauge 304 stainless tube uh, fairly quickly. It maybe took me 15 minutes uh, overall and then another 10 minutes to weld it up and set all that up. So not very, not very long at all. It did turn out pretty good. I could uh, straighten it out a little bit more on the uh, wooden anvil if need be, but I think it's pretty good for now. I did not end up using this foam, foam strip that I got. I was really worried about it slipping in these in these uh, rolls. It didn't slip at all, I don't think, on me. I, I could keep it as, uh, as backup. That's fine. The quarter-inch gap in between the two rollers was perfect. I think it'd go a little bit narrower, maybe. Um, the two-inch quarter-wall tubes... Were more than sufficient nothing bent nothing twisted on me at all i think honestly it was quite overkill for what it was uh the the three eighths thick angle iron same thing there now the handle i don't know that i'd want to make it any lighter duty but i feel like i could make it a little bit lighter it was a little heavy sort of uh you know once it was clamped down to the piece of sheet it was a little heavy kind of i don't know i think it's fine for now and like I mentioned before, I can't get this 304 stainless to run through my Harbor Freight slip roll very well. And, and this performed uh, beautifully. Now, I've probably got about $60, $70 into this. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. There's really not much to it. Some of the things I had lying around, so I, I probably only spent 50 bucks, And there's probably another $20 worth of steel I had already just lying around. Now, if you need something exp inexpensive to roll a tube like this, whether it's 304 stainless or even mild steel, I think this is a pretty good option for you. Now, if you're interested in what I'm doing with these cones to make uh, pulse jets, please subscribe and you'll see the future videos where I'm going to be making all sorts of different pulse jets uh, and hopefully maybe making some vehicles to put them on because that is just good fun. And as always, thanks for stopping by and I hope that I've inspired you to get out and build something.